Today, we're taking a look at the latest iteration of a wireless CarPlay and Android Auto adapter from Carlinkit. So this is the Carlinkit 5.0 or Carlinkit 2 Air. And it's a very, very interesting device for a couple of different reasons. Um, but kind of going back, I did a recent review of the Carlinkit 4.0, which you can see right in the top right corner. Uh, and that video, it really kind of showcased the power of transforming your wired CarPlay solution into something that enables both wireless CarPlay and wireless Android Auto. But this Carlinkit 5.0 adapter is a little bit different, and we'll get into all the details in a little bit. But first things first, the unboxing experience is very, very clean, very simple, very similar to the 4.0 unboxing. So you get the actual device uh, and it's very, very small and you get two separate connectors, a USB-C to type A and then a type C to type C to plug in to your vehicle's wired CarPlay interface. Um, so when you compare this thing to the existing Carlink at 4.0, just from like a size perspective, they're very, very similar. So the Carlink at 4.0 is slightly bigger. Uh, it's definitely got a different finish. You have this blue carbon finish on the 4.0 uh, versus the matte black finish of the 5.0. Um, some slightly different ventilation on the two devices as well. But again, they're very, very similar in size. Um, so you're never really going to see them or have to deal with them when they're in your vehicle, but they're also small enough to kind of stow away and not have to worry about them down the line. But this is the key difference between the two devices. So Carlinkit 5.0 or the 2 Air enables wired CarPlay to wireless CarPlay or wired Android Auto to wireless Android Auto, whereas the Carlinkit 4.0 enables wired CarPlay and transitions that either to wireless CarPlay or wireless Android Auto. So this conversion to wireless Android Auto from wired CarPlay does add a bit of extra latency because you're going between two separate protocols between Apple and Android's ecosystems. Um, so if you want the cleanest and, and, and smoothest uh, latency between your device and your vehicle, you're better off going with the Carlink at 5.0. But if you're in a situation where you have an Android branded phone and your vehicle only has wired CarPlay, you're probably stuck going with the Carlink at 4.0. And uh, you're not really stuck with it. It's still a great experience, just maybe a little bit more latency. And, and now we can actually test it out in a vehicle. So we're going to use a 2021 Jeep Wrangler for this test, but I've tested this thing out with Mercedes, BMW, uh, Chevrolet, a bunch of different auto manufacturers, and these things work great with anything. And first things first, just plug it in, see how long it takes to kind of boot up and get ready to connect. And with the Carlink at 4.0, it's very, very quick. And now to test the actual connection speed. So we're going to connect to the device from Bluetooth. Uh, and see how long it takes to actually populate Apple CarPlay on the vehicle display. And it's actually extremely, extremely quick, taking only nine seconds to get that connection. And once we're in there, it, it's a little laggy at first, but it starts to smooth out. Uh, we can play our music. It's very, very quick in terms of that kind of latency and, and the music distortion. There isn't really anything, uh, maybe a little delay to start and stop. But besides that, the music still sounds as good as it would if you were had a wired connection. And once you get things going, it, it starts to smoothen out and become a lot more responsive than when you first plug it in, but that's kind of typical even with wired CarPlay. And let's just do a quick test with Siri. Hey Siri, what's the score of the Yankee game? The Yankees overcame the Padres by a score of 10 to seven today. So you can see Siri is extremely responsive as well. Pretty much no latency and it sounds really good uh, as well. So like no, no problem there. And if we shut the vehicle off, we kind of get out and we then start it back up. We can see how quick it is to auto reconnect and then start back up Apple CarPlay. So as soon as we start the vehicle back up, Apple CarPlay is already populated. It takes a quick uh, second just for it to actually reconnect so that we can actually, you know, manipulate the screen and, and actually use Apple CarPlay. But overall, it is a very good experience with Carlink at 4.0, especially because we're still going wired CarPlay to wireless CarPlay and not transitioning over to something like Android Auto. But if we try out the Carlink at 5.0, let's see if there's any real differences in the devices. So we're going to plug the same thing in using the same cable, USB-C to USB-C. Um, and you can see now the light is built into the actual Carlink at logo um, but besides that the devices are very very similar um, and it takes a little while for it to actually connect and it never actually populates the carplay 
connection until I go into Bluetooth and connect to the device. So let's do that. We'll connect to the device and it takes a little bit longer for this thing to start up and actually get connected. But I think that's just the way this thing is connecting to CarPlay. So now you can see it populates the same screen as the 4.0. It shows the connection screen and the connection from here is very, very similar to that of the Carlink at 4.0. It just never really gets to the screen until you start up Bluetooth. So once you're in there though, very, very good responsive, maybe a little bit of lag similar to the 4.0, but these are kind of the same test. Like we're going wired CarPlay to wireless CarPlay, no transition over to the Android auto side of things. So if you did have an Android device, you would be able to do that transition and the latency would be a lot quicker, not having to go from CarPlay to wired or wired CarPlay to wireless CarPlay and vice versa. The one thing I did notice is that this comes with the app for your typical user interface for the actual car. So in this case, it says Volkswagen, not Jeep. I guess Volkswagen makes the uh, user interface or the system for Jeep, um, but it didn't have that with the CarLink at 4.0. So I don't know if it's using a slightly different protocol or interface uh, to talk to the car between CarLink at 5.0 and 4.0, but you have that functionality now with the 5.0. And to do another quick Siri test. Hey Siri, what's the score of the Yankee game? The Yankees outdid the Padres by a score of 10 to 7 today. Again, pretty much the same experience as the CarLink at 4.0. And if we turn off the vehicle, um, again, we'll see how quick this thing is to reconnect and auto start back CarPlay up. Maybe a little bit quicker than the 4.0, um, but again, because we're going wired CarPlay to wireless CarPlay with both devices, it's pretty much the same experience. It's really when you're using that different uh, brand of device either going wired uh, CarPlay to wireless Android Auto or wired Android Auto to wireless CarPlay where you start to see those latency things because you're converting signals between the two protocols. Um, but again, it really comes down to which device you need and also how much you want to spend. So the CarLink at 4.0 right now is $99 versus the 5.0 at $109. So a $10 difference. Either way, if you use the code TRUE at checkout, uh, you can get 18% off. Um, but again, it, it really comes down to your particular use case. Do you need to switch between a wired connection that is different uh, from the brand of phone that you have? So if you have wired CarPlay in your vehicle, but you have an Android phone, you kind of have to go with the 4.0. But if you're using the same phone as what is built into your vehicle, then you're better off with the 5.0 just from a latency perspective. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Any questions or comments, leave those down below. If you haven't already, get subscribed to the channel and I'll see you guys in the next one.